Good morning, first grade. Are you here? I hope you are standing up. Yes, Mr. Coulter, we are here. Ready for the morning verse? The sun with loving light makes bright for me each day. The heart with sacred power gives strength unto my limbs. In sunlight shining clear, I am reverent. The strength of humankind has so graciously been planted in my soul that I with all my might may love to work and learn. Toward us comes light and strength. From us rise love and thanks. Morning has come, night is away. Rise with the sun and welcome the day. Oh, I like to rise when the sun she rises early in the morning. I like to hear the small birds singing merrily upon their way. Hooray for the life of a Kona kid tumbled in the sunlit ways. All right. Oh, this. I wanted to share some a little rhyming poem, which maybe you have heard before. I bet you all of the parents have heard it before. It goes like this. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, shut the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Nine, ten, a big fat hen. Let's say it again without all that complicated fingers. I think you can do the fingers or you can pretend to buckle your shoe and close the door. So choose one or the other. I'll do it both ways. First, I'll do just the numbers. Actually, first I'll do the other part. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, shut the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Nine, ten, a big fat hen. So see if you can say it with me. You can either do the motion, picking up things and pretending to do things, pantomiming the movements, or you can just show me your fingers. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, shut the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Nine, ten, a big fat hen. So there's a rhyme in each one of those parts. We have shoe, or we have one, two, buckle my shoe. So two and shoe, they sound very similar. The last part of those words both end in oo, don't they? Two, oo and sh oo. So oo, oo means they rhyme. Shoe and two rhyme. Four and door rhyme. Before shut the door. Four, or, or and do, or, or. They end differently, although they start, or they end the same, but they start differently, don't they? One starts the or, and the other starts with a d or, but they both end in or, d or, f or, door four, that rhymes. Uh, and we have five, six, pick up sticks, six, sticks, x, 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 they both rhyme with x, 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 sticks and six, six and sticks, six sticks, six sticks. Our fingers are not sticks. Uh, those two words rhyme because they both end in X. And then we have eight, eight, seven, eight, lay them straight, straight, eight, eight straight. Those rhyme also. And then ten and hen also rhyme. And ten and hen uh, are actually are even spelled the same. They both end with E-N, letters E and N. Neither of which we have officially taught yet, which we will hopefully get to very shortly. So one more time to say the whole thing through with me. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, shut the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Nine, ten, a big fat hen. All right. Rhyming is fun. It's clever and fun, and there's so many different little poems and things you can do with rhymes that are really cute and fun, and they're easy to remember because they rhyme, which is also nice. All right. So now um, I would like to get back to the facts of 10. So stool, come up a little closer here, and 
Let's review. Okay? How much is that? 5 and 5 is 10. I'm sure you probably knew that one. How much is 6 and 4? 6 and 1, 2, 3, 4 makes 10. How much is 7 butterflies and 3 more? 7 butterflies fluttering around the flowers and 3 more arrived. So 7 plus 3 is 10. Say 7 plus 3 is 10. 7 plus 3 is 10. 7 plus 3 is 10. One more time. 7 plus 3 is 10. All right. And then we have 8 plus 2. There were 8 little puppies. Show me 8. 5, 6, 7, 8. 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 little puppies playing in the meadow. And 2 more joined. 1, 2. And 8 plus 2 makes 10. 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 One more time. 8 plus 2 makes 10. 9 and 1 makes 10. 9 little kittens frisking all about. One more joined them, and 10 were all about. 9 plus 1 is 10. 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 All right. Now, I would like to do a new form drawing this week. We will start practicing it today, and we will continue on uh, another day. So we will start today with a very simple form drawing. It seems simple. Actually, we have to do day and date first. It seems simple, but it's not. Well, since I started doing that, I'm going to demonstrate it right now. I'm going to make some zigzag lines, speaking of Z and zigzag. And these, zig I'll make them really big so that you can see them from, I don't have to move the camera. And this line is not going to go straight up, and it's not going to go straight sideways. It's not going to be either one of those things. I'm just showing you a straight up line and a sideways line. I'm going to go right in between those two lines like that. And then I'm going to come down the same way. And then I'm going to go back up the same way and back down the same way. The temptation, of course, will be to make them too tight. That is another kind of form drawing which can also be fun. In fact, why don't we just try that? Why don't we make one that is make two different ones today. And I'm going to put another line here to show you where we're not going to go. And now I'm going to split this one in half. And now I'm going to ignore the rest of this. And I'm going to keep going up and down in a spiky way. I Hopefully I'm making it look easy. I can see some little curves and little bumps, and I can see it's gotten a little skinnier as I went forward. This one's leaning a little bit more, but if I really concentrate, I can do it pretty well. So this is for you to practice until tomorrow when we will put it in the main lesson book. I think we will do both of those perhaps in our main lesson book. But for today, it's just practice. So you can use your chalkboard, hopefully you have a chalkboard and some chalk available to you. If you do not, then you can use anything, pencil and paper with scratch paper. Do not use your main lesson book yet for practicing, and we will practice this again in a little bit. Today is Thursday, Thur, er, 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 there's my er finally, Thurs. D A Y Thursday, comma September Thursday September. Cross my T. What is the date today? It's the twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. We're finally back to the. At the end of the number. First, second, third, first, second, third, and the rest of them are all th. Two 
2020. And if we say the days of the week in English, it sounds like this. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, with me. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So, pretty soon I want to be able to ask you, I want someone to be able to ask you, what is yesterday? What was yesterday? And you can say, yesterday was Wednesday. You will have these totally memorized. If they say, what is tomorrow? You will say, tomorrow is Friday. If they say, what's the day after tomorrow? Then you will say, it's Saturday, the day after tomorrow. So you can quiz somebody. If you feel you already know how to do that, now your job is to quiz somebody else, somebody older than you preferably, who uh, can verify that you have it correct. All right, Thursday, September 24th, 2020. And in Spanish, we would say it's uh, lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves, jueves, 24 de septiembre, septiembre, I was saying it wrong, septiembre 2020. With me, if you are ready to say it in Spanish, hoy es jueves 24 de septiembre 2020. Okay, moving right along. Today I will raise the 21. And I will make a big 22 that you can see better from over there. Oopsie. 20 second. Not the most beautiful twos I've ever made. 22nd day of school. And I'll go like that so that I can see. I have, whoops, one more hash mark. Hash mark? Uh, so I have 5, 10, 15, 20, 21, 22, 20 second days. And if that's all sounds so simple, and yet it's a little complicated when you break it all down. It's not the 22 day of school, it's the 22nd day of school. And when we count by fives with our fingers, 5, 10, 15, 20. And as we go further on, we'll learn what comes next. You might guess that it's 20. Five already you might guess that all right so oh yeah I thought I would I thought I would do something different today and if you don't have a jump rope I'm guessing you probably don't have a jump rope with you I have my big jump rope that I use for um, for turning for students and Uncle David the games teacher told me that it, the right length of a jump rope is like up to your armpit so I only have to wrap this a little bit around my hands to make it just the right size for my armpits feels a little too long to me, honestly, but I will try it anyway. And let's see, will you count with me and see how many I can do? Okay, I can go forward, I guess. I don't know, I'm gonna have to turn this way, I think, so I have more room. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. I'm be out of breath. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Oh, I'm kind of glad I missed there because I don't know what I was going to teach. I'd be totally out of breath. Well, first grade, today we only count to 25 because that's as far as I could jump. All right, next we have... Next we have... I'm going to go over this form drawing one more time so that you can practice it properly because we didn't really kind of glossed over it, didn't we? So you can use your fingers to start with in the air and make a zigzag. Make a skinny zigzag. Make a wide zigzag. Like that. And now facing your writing surface that you're going to use and just using your finger, pretend, try to make them all about the same length. Okay, 
think I like that skinny one. So again, I'm going to kind of measure. I will start over here. I'm going to make a line like that, and I'm going to make a line like that, cutting that angle right in the middle. And I'm going to start here and go up. Now I'm going to erase those. You don't have to do those if you don't want, but you can see about how tilted I want this. It's not a vertical line, it's not a horizontal line, it's not right in the middle, it's a little steeper than that. It's a steep line, which makes a small angle right there. And now I'm going to go on up and down. I'm going to try to make them perfect if I can. And you can maybe begin also doing this in a practice situation. Yours might be smaller than this. The idea is to make them all the same. Even if your zigzags are wider or if they are skinnier, I'd like them to be like this. So if yours are wider or skinnier, it's okay. Just try your best to make them all the same. All the same. So that they don't get they don't start out skinny and get wide. They don't start out wide and get skinny. But that is tricky. And it takes a lot of practice, and that is why we are doing it. That is why we are doing it. So we have zigzag line, that's a good practice. Now we will have the D in the main lesson book. So now you may get out your main lesson book. And you can come back and practice this another time. You will have a main lesson book page, and my page looks like this. My page is right here. I'm going to put a line in the middle. Hopefully I'm not remembering this wrong. I do not believe we did the D yet. Choose any color. I'm going to have a, a green this time. It's kind of a light green. Just that happen I have this chalk in my tray. Make a border with any of your block crayons. In your main lesson book, I did forget to say this time to go to the very next blank page in your main lesson book. So if you've skipped pages, then you need to go back. So this would be a good time, right? Because you can put something else here eventually. Go back, find the very next blank page. So open, always open from the very beginning of your book. Turn the pages until you find the very next blank page. We are not going to use the bottom right now. We're just going to use the top for the D. I will let you finish getting that ready. Um, and just to remind you that, so here's my dragon picture. You know, yours might, well, with the spiral on the top, we don't have to worry about whether it's this way or this way. But, well, that's today's drawing, hmm. But just because my M and W have the spiral on this side, doesn't mean that yours might not be the other way. Yours might be the other way around. Like, it just so happens that my S and my F are on the other side of this. Yours may not be like that. Yours may not be like that because I use my notebook. You're not allowed to do this, but I use my notebook for taking all my notes so that I know what I'm going to say each day. All right, so hopefully you are ready to do that. I will turn back to my notes page, and then we will review our story that I told you yesterday. I think the camera does need to be closer for this. I think that would be helpful. Okay. So with my finger first, straight line for my D. And then I will come back to the top and make a nice even curve. I feel comfortable now to do that. Mm 
D, capital D, D, D for door and D, dragon and ding dong and doozy, thinking about pine cone and pepper pot, lowercase d. That is a little bit tricky. I do this one the same way that I do my R and my N and my M. It's a bouncing one. So I'm gonna start right here. I forgot to make you practice this first, but here we go. Hopefully you practice it all right. I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna make a little arrow so you can see where I'm going. I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna go straight up from here, all the way up and back down to there. So it goes up and it comes back down on the same line right to there. That is a little tricky. People do it a little wrong sometimes. It's nice to do it correctly because otherwise it does not turn out as beautiful and graceful as it could. So there's the D and we will color in the background with some other color uh, that you feel might look good with your green. How about for me, I'm gonna choose maybe a purple. Fill in your background so each page is beautiful. And I would like to give you a little bit of a homework assignment. I would like you to go through your whole main lesson book, show each page to someone who takes care of you, and explain to them what each page is. You can say, oh, this is the drawing of Hansel and Gretel. And you can tell that story in a really short way, can't you? What's the quickest way to tell the story of Hansel and Gretel? Two little children who were left alone in the woods, almost got eaten by a witch, and made their way back home again. That's a simple way of telling it, isn't it? So I have finished this, and then each time you come to a new page, you may come to the D page, and you say, you could say D is for dragon. When you come to the H page, you could say H is for house. When you come to the F page, you could say F is for fish. When you come to the, let's see, other pages we have done, I'll put that up there so we can see. A is for apple, B, B is for bat or B, C is for cat or crescent moon, D is for dragon, F is for fish, H is for house, M is for Hmm, what did we do? Moon, mountain, mountain. We've drawn a lot of moons, I just realized. Today's picture also has a moon. I think I like drawing night pictures. We will have to put a sun in the next picture after this, though, hopefully. M is for mountain. Uh, Q is for quit and quiet and quickly and queen, of course. Queen is how we taught it. R is for running river and rascals running around the ragged rocks. I'd like to you re review, or another R sound, review all of those letters, all that we have learned with someone who takes care of you. R, we, I don't remember right now how we brought R. Maybe it was from Running River and Rabbit. I can't quite remember right now. S is for snake and many other things. And T is for t tree and tiptoes other things. W w wave, W is for wave. Oops, there it is. And Z is for zebra and zipper and many things. So please practice those and show somebody each page in your main lesson book and tell a quicker, you know, a quick version of the story that is associated with each of the drawings that we have made. Okay? Show your sibling or anybody who takes care of you. Let us go back to some of our words that we have written. I'm going to do a little more erasing here. I hope you have time to do the things that I ask you to do. And I know things are busy, and you are little children, and playing is one of the very best things you can do. So I don't 
I don't mind if you need to do a lot of playing and you have some time, hopefully you have some time to do your worksheets and other things, other learning activities. But playing is really good too. You can, especially if you play, maybe act out one of the stories that I've told you. So I want to review some of these words that we have been writing and learning and reading. So we have the at family. I'm going to write at, at, and I can put any letter in front. B, b, at, bat. B, oops, that's a little messy. At, b, at, bat, bat. D, at, dat, dat. Dat is not really a word. That is a word, but not dat. But at fat is a word. A t fat. Now, if by chance you are one of the children who feels they already know all of these, then your job is to write them in lowercase letters if you know those or to go ahead of me and see if you can think of what I'm going to say next. And also your job is to write them as beautifully as you can with a perfect pencil grip. So all those things are levels of challenge that you could do. And you might think of some other words even that, you, that are in this family of at, fat. And we have huh, at, hat, hat. Huh. A t hat, and then we have m mm, at mat. And then we have, let's see, q r r at r at rat. I'm looking forward to making up a silly sentence about cats and rats and hats and mats pretty soon. And we have s at, s at, s, makes a sound, s sound, sound, s, a, t, s at, sat, mm -hmm. and that is about it, tat, wat, zat, no. All right. So we have those, and I can say, I had a, oh, I did not put cat. That's funny. C, A, T. My k at is very fat. I hope you can guess what I'm going to say and say it with me. Whoopsie, I see I left you off there. My k Cat is very fat. She sits on a mat and wears a little hat. She likes to chase the rat who sat on the mat with a bat who was also very fat and also wore a Hat and was afraid of the cat who sat on top of the rat who ate the mat. It's getting weirder and weirder, isn't it? Hopefully that's fun and silly for you. Anyway, we have all those funny words, all those good words we can use, and others. But we will now move on to the next thing, which is to, um, I'm going to erase this because it's hard for me to erase my dragon that I worked so hard on uh, yesterday, finishing that up. I will get this ready here and we will do another drawing. So be ready for the next drawing 
In the meantime, let's think about what our story was about last time. Yesterday we told the story. Think about it. What is one of the most important words that I could say that is even in the title of this story? There's many ways to talk about this story. There's some very important characters and creatures and people and problems and one of them is the boy and one of them of course is the bird the golden bird so you remember there was a king who had a bird or who had a gold, an orchard a beautiful orchard and a garden and in the garden was a beautiful tree with golden apples hanging from it the golden apples hung from the tree and were very special to the king. And the king one day found that one was missing. And I'm going to tell it a little faster than last time, see if I can speed it up. He sent his oldest son, who failed to guard the tree very well. Somebody was stealing those apples. And his, young, his second son went out and didn't have any better luck finding out who was taking those golden apples. Then. He sent his youngest son, who he did not want to send because he didn't think very much of him, thought he was not very competent. But the youngest son went out there and woke up, stayed awake long enough to shoot an arrow at the thief, which was a beautiful golden bird. Well, he missed the bird, but he caught the wing a little bit, and one feather, golden feather, floated down to the ground, which he brought to his father. His father decided that he must have the entire bird, not just the feather, the feather was so beautiful and amazing, worth more than all the kingdom. So he sent first the big son and then the middle-sized son and finally the younger son to go after it. On their way, they met a fox. The older two sons did not pay attention to the good advice of the fox and they went to an inn, which is a place to sleep and eat, and they went to the, the fancy inn and didn't go to the old dingy inn and that's what the fox had told them to do. And they got stuck in that inn and they just spent the rest of their days having a party and getting into mischief of one sort or another. But the youngest son shared his lunch with the fox and the fox gave him the good advice and he stayed at the inn. The fox told him to, the old beat up one, and passed the night very comfortably. Next day, the fox gave him a ride to his next destination to go after looking for this golden bird to his castle. The fox told him, there's the beautiful bird, sneak in, everyone will be asleep. You will get the bird, but do not transfer the bird to the fancy, beautiful golden cage. Just leave it in the old beat up cage and you will, no trouble will come to you. Well, unfortunately this time, the youngest son did not listen to the fox's good advice could not stand to leave that beautiful golden cage and the beautiful golden bird he thought should live in a beautiful golden cage. As soon as he tried to do that, everyone woke up because the bird squawked really loud, screeched really loud, and woke everyone up and he was condemned to death for trying to steal the bird. Well, they did say though that if you can go and get the golden horse that runs like the wind, we'll let you go and we'll give you the golden bird. And so the fox helped him again, gave him a ride to the next palace and gave him advice. The advice was, take the, everyone will be asleep again, sneak in quietly, take the horse, and do not put the fancy golden saddle on her or you will have trouble. But again, the son did not listen and he tried to put that beautiful golden saddle on the golden horse that runs like the wind and everyone woke up because the horse whinnied really loud. He was arrested, tried, convicted, and condemned to death again. But the king here also said, if you can go and get the, golden ma the maiden with the golden hair from the golden castle further down, then I will give you the golden horse back and spare your life. So again, the boy goes, and again, the fox gave him advice. And again, he does not ignore the he ignores the advice of the fox. And instead of sneaking off to uh, with the maiden who he and she fell in love together as soon as 
he woke her up with a kiss on the forehead, which is how the story goes. <laughs> and she woke up and they fell in love and she begged to go say goodbye to her parents. But the fox had told him, don't let her say goodbye to her parents. Of course she did. Couldn't stand to let her, to, to make her not say goodbye to her parents because she was crying and so sad. And so she said goodbye, everyone woke up, and again, our, our hero was condemned to death for trying to steal the, golden, the maiden with the golden hair. But yet again, the king was like, okay, you, if you can move that mountain out of my view, then you can have my daughter, because she clearly loves you and wants to marry you. So he tried to move the mountain, but it was too big. The fox told him, look, go to sleep. I'll take care of this. So through some magic, the fox was able to move the mountain. And in the morning, the king saw the mountain was gone and let the two young people be married. And they went off with the fox's advice again to get the horse. So, but they were in love, of course. So the fox said, look, instead of giving the maiden to them, you will pretend to give them the maiden, and then you'll get on the horse and go around shaking hands with everybody, saying goodbye. The last person you shake hands with will be the maiden. You swing her up onto the back of your horse, and you gallop away, and that's just what they did. So they galloped away, and this time the fox said, okay, you leave the maiden with me hiding in the forest, and you take the horse, and we'll have another plan to get the bird and the horse. So you're gonna leave the, gonna, they're gonna bring you the bird right away because they'll be so overjoyed to see the horse that runs like the wind, and the, they did that, and they just grabbed the cage and rode off with the bird and the horse, went back to the maiden, and they all went back. They started on their way back to the castle. Well, now the fox said, well, you have everything that you wanted, you know, wonderful gifts to bring back to your father, and a beautiful and lovely young person to marry as well. So I will leave you. But, oh, I forgot about this part. I forgot this part of the story. But the fox said, I ask one favor of you now that I've done all these things for you. And the prince said, oh, what is that? Surely I can do whatever you want. He said, like, cut off my paws and my head. And the boy said, I can't do that. That's crazy. You've helped me so much. I'm not going to cut you off. The fox begged him, but he wouldn't do it. And so they left. And the fox said, well, if you won't do it, I'm going to take my leave of you, but I'll give you this last piece of advice. Don't buy flesh bound for the gallows. That means don't pay for anybody who's condemned to death. And don't sit by the side of the well. It's like the fox could see the future, which the boy said, why would anyone sit on the side of a well? And certainly, why would anybody pay money for someone who's about to be condemned to death? It doesn't make any sense. But they went along, went along, and sure enough, they came to this village where the inns were, and his brothers had made such a mess of their lives, making such bad choices, that they had finally been, gotten in so much trouble that they had been condemned to, to death. And as they approached, they saw a big commotion. They asked the question, what's going on? They told them. The boy offered to pay gold for their freedom, of course, because they were his brothers. They allowed that, and he took his brothers along with the maiden, the horse, the bird, and headed back toward home. However, they did stop to have a little picnic by the side of the well, and you guessed it, the big brothers pushed the little brother into the well and left him for dead at the bottom of the well, took the maiden, the horse, and the golden bird back to their father and took all the credit, can you believe it? Took all the credit for getting all those gifts and bringing them back. The father was very, very happy However, the horse would not eat, the bird would not sing, and the maiden only cried and cried and cried. The bigger brothers had threatened the woman, the young princess, with death if she told anything of the story, of the truth of the story. So all she did was cry, and the horse did not eat, and the bird did not sing. Well, the fox went to the well and told the boy that although you have not followed my advice, I know you are a kind and compassionate, good person, and I will continue to help you even though you have made some bad choices and not listened to my advice. So he pulled the, the 
the prince out of the well. They found someone to trade clothes with, a beggar, and they went with his old raggedy clothes in disguise back home. Well, when he got there, this was many weeks later, when he got there, the maiden had been crying for weeks and weeks, but suddenly she felt her heart lighten, and she knew not why. And the king noticed that the horse was eating, the bird was singing, and the maiden was no longer crying. And he said, what has happened? He asked the princess, what has happened? The princess said, I don't know, but I think. I have this feeling that my true husband is here, but I do not know where he is. And she told the king all the bad story of the two older brothers who had treated them all so poorly. Well, the king was furious with the older sons. He called everybody in the whole kingdom together, and when they all came together, sure enough, the old beggar, who was really a prince, was there as well. The princess recognized him right away, and went to him, and they embraced, and the king threw the two older sons in prison for their crimes. The prince and the princess were married, became king and queen in time, and were happy to the end of their days. That is a big, long story with lots of different parts, and I hope you enjoyed it. Snip, snap, snout. Oh, no. <laughs> That's what we say in kindergarten. Now I say, so it is, and so it was, and so it shall be. Snip, snap, snout. My tail is told out. Now, the picture of the golden bird. At first, I was going to draw her in the cage, and then I decided, decided that I thought that she would be better off in a tree with the golden apples at the beginning of the story. It is another night picture. I used gold to outline the bird, although I would suggest maybe using yellow to start, and that's what we will do. First we will draw the bird, and then we will draw the tree and the moon and the background. So I did use gold and yellow in my bird. It is rather tricky to grow up to, for me it's tricky to uh, draw a bird-shaped bird, but it's not too hard if you know how to draw your straight line and your curve. And you can imagine the bird on the page before you start. Because if you draw a tiny little bird down here, or if you draw her up here and she ends up over there off the page, that's not good. So pretend you can see the whole bird right here. And I think I would even move her a little bit this way in the picture so that I can make those long tail feathers. So I am going to start her not quite in the middle like I did here, but a little further over. I'm going to put her head here. There's plenty of room here. Put her head here. And the head is shaped curved. Just a little curve there, and then it goes down here. That's almost a straight line. Just a little curve out, and then the tail feathers down there. And the breast side of the bird will be here underneath. So that's how I did it, and that's how I'm going to start it right now. You can even use your uh, block crayon. I'm going to put the head way up here with my block crayon. I just start with a curve like that. And then just to give myself a little more confidence, I'm going to put the beak there. Now, you might have drawn it too big or too small, so think about that. You can always make it a little bigger. I think mine's about the right size. Just a little pokey. Thing out there. We can fix it later when we decide if we've done the rest of it pretty well. Okay, so there's the bird's head. Now there's a little curve, a little curve slightly down and then it goes down like that. So just a little like that, right? Just a little like that. That's all I have so far. And then I'm going to come out just a tiny bit. I'm going to go down like this. I'm going to come down a little tiny, it's almost a straight line. Okay, I'm gonna do the underside of her. So here's her, you can always pause this. It's gonna look a little duck-like now, unfortunately. Let's, let's see here. There's her head, her neck is small, and then the breast part does come out like that. And meets up over there. Let's see. A little fatter. Go on the inside. 
make adjustments now. Let's see. The body is pretty good size for the head. Maybe the body's a little small for the head. A little tiny bit bigger. I don't know why there's such a big curve down there. And now I'm going to go ahead and do tail feathers. Two is enough, maybe, for now. I'll always add another one later. I think we will finish this story later, uh, finish this drawing later, because I don't feel like I have enough time to do everything I want to do. When you do bird's legs, they always should come a little forward, because they have the same thing that most animals have. They have just draw, I can erase this, so I'm just gonna draw. They have this backward facing knee. Our knees bend this way if we're facing this way, but this is the bird like this, this tail, and their, and their knee goes backwards. But you can't really see that. Birds, it's usually underneath them like that. And that's why when I do a bird, I do their legs this way. I do two of them. And I'm gonna make a little claw that way, a little claw like that, and then later I'll come back and I'll do my stick. I'll show you what that's going to look like. So I can fix those later a little bit more if I want to, but I'm going to make a, a stick, and I'm going to draw the stick like this. I'm going to pause on top of the, before I go through it, I'm going to fill it in there. I'm going to cover up, I'm going to cover up one side. Maybe I'm going to leave both of them open. Let's see how that works out. So that's where I start. Yeah, I think I can, I can cover up one side of this, but I want one foot to be visible over that branch. Connect that a little better. Take a look at the shape of it. I feel fairly satisfied with that. I still think it's a little, something's a little funny about it, but it's just a different kind of bird. Birds are all different shapes. Maybe the neck is a little thin. all different kinds of beaks. Some birds have thick beaks, some have thin beaks, so it doesn't really matter. This is a golden bird. We didn't say what type of golden bird. I think I'm gonna put one more tail feather that's gonna be up here higher because I think they feel like they're too, a little bit too low, so. There we go. That feels good. Now I'm gonna take my gold crayon, since I've been using yellow, you could even just use it with yellow. I'm gonna make this shape of a wing right there. Starts here and goes like that. Starts in the middle, curves, and goes to there. So I think I will stop right there, and I want to read to you a little bit. We will put the moon and some stars and a background in, but we will work on that some more tomorrow. And, oh, that's interesting. Tomorrow I should probably be teaching from uh, my lanai again, because Friday is the day that I teach from home. So we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll start it over again on another piece of paper, or, hmm, not sure. Let's see. I think that I will read a little bit, because I really want to get some more letters going. I'm going to go over to the side here. Perhaps you would like to continue doing the drawing. I will just talk you through what I did for the rest of this. So I did make a crescent moon. This time I tipped it sideways a little bit because I noticed when I've been looking up at the moon at night, it's usually tipped like that. It has been recently at least. I just had the fall equinox, which is a special time of year, right in between uh, summer, the middle of summer and the middle of winter dry season. The other thing I did is I, I put branches off of this, and branches off of that, and branch off of that, and branch off of that. I kept doing that. Did that several times. Like that. And I did take the green. Which one I see? I did take, I took green. Actually, I took light green and dark green. I think you only have a dark green crayon, so I'll just use my dark green. And I just made these little scribbles for leaves. I didn't try to draw each leaf perfectly, although you could if you want to. 
And I did put some golden apples. I think if I make them the wrong shape, they kind of look like oranges. But I used yellow, and I put a little green over the yellow, just because, I don't know, it's an apple, and maybe it's not quite ripe all the way. And I drew several of those around, as you can see. Well, I think I only do, drew two. And that's all I did. Actually, I took my gold crayon, since I did all this in, um, in yellow. I'm gonna use orange so you can see it better. And I just kind of went over some of the areas like this. I went around the outside of her a little bit. I put that gold here. And you can even switch to a, a regular orange for its feet. Blend that back in. And I put a few stars, which you could or you don't have to, I guess, in this situation. And then I used my block crayon, my blue block crayon, to go all around. I kind of careful around the stars and the moon and the bird and fill in the whole background with this blue. And then actually I went over it, the black block crayon, right over the top of the, right over the top of the blue. The black crayon will look a little darker. Oops. All right, so that being said, I think I will read chapter E. E, chapter E for E. Let's see if I... E is for Ompliant. Ompliant is their elephant friend who lives in the forest near their farm. And only the children know about him. Tiptoes and the gnomes sat on the shore of Running River while Tom and June practiced writing all the letters they'd learned so far, A, B, C, and D. So we jumped around a little bit. They're doing it little by little, one by one. The water gurgled and whispered quietly while over their heads white clouds were sailing. Tiptoes gazed up and saw a cloud that looked like a bee and a high, wispy one that made the letter C. She pointed them out to the children. What about the letter E? Tom asked the gnomes. What have you two cooked up this time? Nothing, said Pinecone, sounding disappointed. Completely nothing. We couldn't think of a single thing, said Pepperpot. We thought of emus and elbows and elastic bands and eagles and earwigs and edges, said Pinecone. Even engines and, and, uh, and, I don't have my glasses on, and Elans, I don't know what that is, and emails, said Pepperpot, but none of them look like the letter E. Let's go wandering, said Tiptoes. You never know what you might find if you look hard enough. And off they hiked to the forest. It was dim and quiet under the trees. Now and then a leaf fell silently from above and landed without a sound. They walked quietly, looking around and listening intently. What shape are we looking for, whispered Tom. I don't know what the letter E looks like. Shh, said Pinecone. We'll know when we find one. But, said Tom. Hush, said Pepperpot. We're looking. Tom sighed. He didn't like being kept in the dark. That means not knowing what's going on. Then they went deeper and even deeper into the forest, where the trees were large and old their roots covered with moss. Stop, whispered Tiptoes, holding a finger to her lips. I see one. Where, said Juneberry. Over there, whispered Tiptoes, pointing. Everyone looked, but no one saw anything. On the moss, by the tree, said Tiptoes, pointing again. Pinecone and Pepperpot frowned. They still couldn't see anything. He's asleep and mostly covered with a leaf, said Tiptoes. Let's go over, but be very quiet. If he wakes up, he'll vanish. Tiptoes flitted into the air and led the way. Everyone stepped carefully across the forest floor. They didn't stir a leaf or snap a twig. Tiptoes raised her hand for them to stop. They're on the moss, she said, pointing. It's an elf king, gasped Juneberry. He's asleep in the mossy bed. Tiptoes flew closer and pointed to his crown. That's the shape of the letter E, she whispered. E. Uh, 
E is for Elf King's elegant crown. The gnomes grinned from ear to ear and nodded their heads. Tom and June looked out their, took out their sketchbooks and hardly daring to breathe, drew the Elf King with his silvery crown. When they were done, everyone tiptoed away and left him sleeping. Tom and June compared drawings. Tom's drawings are always better than mine, said Juneberry. That's because he's older, said Tiptoes. And besides, yours are fine for your age. Tom sat on a fallen branch and practiced drawing the letter E. He drew lots of them. The E looked like an electric plug, he said after a while. Yeah, yeah, there we go. That's kind of an E shape, isn't it? The ones with three prongs. Suddenly, the ground began to shake. They could feel it shuddering under their feet. It grew stronger and stronger. Oh dear, said Pepper Pot, I hope E is not for earthquake. I, ha I hate earthquakes. They make my knees feel funny. E is not for earthquake, laughed Tiptoes. At least not today. E is for e elephant. An elephant, cried the gnomes. We forgot, it's only on the elephant. Just then a huge elephant came lumbering out of the underbrush. He lived secretly in Farmer John's forest. Only the fairy folk and the children knew about him. He'd run away from the circus because he didn't like cages. He lumbered up to them, his huge ears flapping. Oh, said Umpliant, my ears have been telling me things. And the little birds and bears have been telling my ears things too. What have the little birds and bears been telling you? Laughed the gnomes, giving Opleon's leg a, tug, a hug. My ears have been telling me that someone is learning their A, B, C, D, E, said Opleon. That's right, said the gnomes. We've been teaching Tom and June how to write their A, B, C's. Oh, humph, said Umpliant. That's what my ears and the little birds and bears have been telling me. But Pinecone and Pepper Pot, it, it's not their ABCs, it's their ABCDEs. We didn't know that, said the gnomes. It's true, said Umpliant. You have to say ABCDE because E is for enormous elephant. Now, I am going to show Tom and June how to make a proper E. Everyone watch out, elephant sitting down. Everyone stood back as Ompliant sat on the ground. He sat on his rump, held himself straight, his back and stuck his legs and out his trunk. This is the enormous elephant E, said Ompliant proudly. It's the biggest and best E in the whole world. I've been practicing ever since Tiptoes told me that Tom and June needed this letter for school. Tom and June did a sketch of Ompliant in their books. He made a wonderful capital E. All done, they cried. Thank you, Ompliant. Oomph, said Ompliant. Watch out again, elephant standing up. And he rocked himself and swayed himself up onto four feet again. Bye, Ompliant, everyone called as he lumbered off into the forest. See you later. Toodle doodle, said Opliant, waving his trunk goodbye. There he is, shaped like the letter E. All right, dear ones, thank you for being with me this morning. See you tomorrow.